Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We start uh, the second video on the chapter 18, which is biotechnology and genetic modification. And this is 5090 biology. Now in 18.2, as you can see, we're going to talk only about genetic modification. The previous was about biotechnology. This is all about genetic modification. Number one is describe genetic modification as changing the genetic material of an organism by removing, changing or inserting individual genes. Then number two, understand that gene that controls the production of human insulin has been inserted into bacterial DNA for commercial production of insulin. Then outline the uses of genetic modification in crop plants by inserting genes. So resistance to herbicides, resistance to insect pests and to provide additional vitamins. And of course the last is the most dangerous point is the potential advantages and risks of genetic modification uh, limited to modifying crop plants and bacteria. Now what is genetic modification? It is actually that you are going to either remove, either change or insert remove, change or insert individual genes into taking it from one organism and putting it into another. So you're changing the genetic material of an organism. Like you're taking the human insulin gene from a human cell and putting it into the bacterial plasmid and then into the bacteria. So now you have genetically modified bacteria. Now how do we do this? Now on one side you can see you have the bacteria on the other side you have the human pancreas cell but of course you can take it from any cell of the body or because all the cells of the body have the same genetic material why because every human being started from one cell the zygote so every cell of your body is the same except your red blood cell doesn't have a nucleus so it doesn't have any dna in it and of course in the reproductive organs if it's a man then in the testes the sperms have half the number of chromosomes and in the woman if it's in the ovaries then so that is the only differences that I can think of. But every cell of your body is the same. It started from one cell, the zygote. Okay, so you've got a human pancreas cell and you've got the bacterium. So the bacterial, we take out the plasmid DNA. And then you cut the plasmid DNA using a restriction enzyme. While from the human cell, you've taken out the human insulin producing gene. And then you put it in this. And now it has become recombinant DNA. So you put the human DNA in, the, in this uh, plasmid DNA which was cut with restriction enzyme and now you've got put this into a new bacteria. This bacteria please remember was destroyed. Now you put it into a new bacteria. Now this new bacteria has recombinant bacterium or it is the uh, transgenic bacterium or the one which has been transformed. So introduction of the recombinant DNA into a bacterial cell. Now what we've done is we've put all these bacteria and multiply in the fermentation tank and we put in the nutrient medium, the food for it, glucose, proteins, amino acids, fats and then in this fermentation tank now what is going to happen is that this bacteria is going to produce human insulin for us. Now we have to extract and purify the human insulin and of course we're not going to go into the details of it and then finally we're going to have this human insulin ready for us to give it to people who are suffering from diabetes and they can get an injection of this and they can help in uh, treating their symptoms. Actually, it's not a cure, but it's just treating the symptoms. Now, oh, by genetic modification, how can we produce insect resistant crops? You see, why are we so allergic to insects as a farmer? The reason is that the insects eat the leaves. And the leaves are the photosynthetic area. So the if the leaves are eaten up, and there are less surface area of the leaves left and ultimately you see these leaves are eaten up by the uh, insects then less photosynthesis means less glucose made less glucose means less starch less starch means less glucose available for uh, respiration and growth so less crop yield now you have to associate this back to crop yield because basically if i'm a farmer and I grow wheat crop, but I want more of the wheat seeds. If I grow sugar cane, well, I want more of the stem of the sugar cane. So I want more growth. But if the leaves are not there and the insects eat up all the leaves, then I'm going to have a very, very low crop yield. And that is not going to be good for me. 
So how do we genetically modify organism? Insecticide gene created using recombinant DNA technology. Then we've got the plasmid vectors. Then we've got the digestion with restriction enzymes. Then we've got these cleaved vectors. Why? Because the plasmid is a vector because it's going to carry the gene of choice into the organism. Now we've got the cleaved DNA. Now we're growing the plants and taking up the insecticide gene. Now we put this recombinant DNA into these plant cells. Now you select for insecticidal cells and then the cell used for plant propagation. Now insects that feed on these plants will die. So what have we done? We have actually taken out an insecticide gene, means a gene which produces a toxin which kills the insects. Now what we've done is we put it into the plant. So when the plants grow up, they're producing this toxin. And then this, whenever the insects come to eat, come on the leaves and start to eat up the leaves, well, they're going to die. So we get in, in, insecticide, insect, sorry, insect resistant crop plants. These are insect resistant crop plants. And of course, we'll have more crop yield. So more money and the farmer is going to be richy rich. Now we're going to talk about weeds. This is not the other weed, the drug weed, sorry. So please do not give me those files. Now these are these weeds growing here, these weeds. Now besides this, we've got the main, this thing is the grass here. But inside the grass, which we have planted in our lawn, we've got all these weeds. Now I don't want these weeds. So what I do is I spray a chemical, which is called a herbicide. And all these weeds will die. And then we can just have the grass and then we won't have. Now this is another weed. I don't want this either. So either I can remove it manually. But if there are hundreds of them, then how can you remove them all manually? And if you leave even a small bit of the root, well, it's going to grow again. Even if you leave a bit of the root or a bit of the stem or a bit of the leaf, they're going to grow again. So what we do is we spray a chemical on it. And this chemical is a herbicide and is going to kill all the weeds. But how do I now use this? What I do is that I'm going to now make my crop plants resistant to this herbicide. Now the most common genetically engineered traits or the genetically engineered crops on the market were designed to either be resistant to herbicides Detol is a bactericidal, means it kills bacteria. Herbicide means kills herbicide, herbs. Herbs means the weeds which are not part of the main crop, cash crop which we have. So insect pests or both. Pest resistance, a gene from the microbacillus thuringiensis Bt is inserted into cotton, corn and other crops, allowing the plants to produce an insecticide that kills caterpillar pests. Bt in spray form is widely used in organic farming. Then herbicide resistance. Corn, soya, canola, cotton and other crops have been genetically engineered with a bacterial gene to be immune to the weed killer glyphosate sold as Roundup. When farmers spray their fields with Roundup, the weeds are killed, but the crops survive. The main crop, which is the cash crop, either the wheat crop or the rice crop or the corn crop or the soya or the canola or the cotton crop. So this is what you've got to understand. Pest resistance means it's going to kill the poor caterpillars who come to eat up the leaves. Or if you spray it with a chemical which is herbicide, herbicide. Now these plants will be resistant. They will be immune to the weed killer, to this weed killer which is called glyphosate. Now just a little more detail about it. I want some of you who are interested in a little more detail will enjoy it. Otherwise, you just skip this. Now there's a bacteria DNA insect resistant gene. We've got this insect resistant gene from a bacteria. We cut out the gene. We insert the gene into a vector with a selectable antibiotic resistant marker gene. Then we copy the vector in bacteria. Then we coat tungsten or coal particles with DNA vectors. Then we load a vector coated particles onto a Teflon bullet and load the bullet into a gene gun. Then shooting the gene gun releases the particles at a high velocity penetrating the plant cells. The vector enters the cell, the genes are incorporated into the plant genome. The cells are plated on a selective antibiotic medium. Only cells that have incorporated the vector will grow. These cells are transferred to medium containing plant growth factors and we get an insect resistant tomato plant. 
Now, the basics of genetic engineering, again, in a simplified form, I'm giving it for some of the students who want to understand it in a little more detail. Researchers isolate a gene from an organism, that is the trait they want to impart to a plant. Single gene is isolated and modified. Cell with desired trait genetic material we've got. Now we've got the isolated target gene. Now this is the plant tissue. Many copies of the gene are inserted into plant cells and induced to grow. Seeds from mature plants are studied for successful transformation of plants with a new trait. So this is the basics of how we do genetic engineering in plants. Now coming to the possible hazards of GM crops. One of the possible harmful effects of planting GM crops is that the modified genes might go into wild plants. If a gene for herbicide resistance found its way by pollination onto a weed plant, the plant might become resistant to herbicides and so become a super weed. The purpose of field trials is to assess the likelihood of this happening until it is established that it is a negligible risk because then the licenses to grow GM crops will not be issued. So to prevent the transfer of pollen from GM plants, other genes can be introduced which stop the plant from producing pollen and induce the seeds and fruits to develop without fertilization. This is a process that occurs naturally in many cultivated and wild plants. Apart from specific headers, there is also a sense of unease about introducing genes from one species into a totally different species. This is something that does not happen in nature and therefore long-term effects are not known. In conventional crossbreeding, the genes transferred come from the same or a closely related species. However, in crossbreeding, the whole raft of genes is transferred and this has sometimes had bad results when genes other than the target genes have combined to produce harmful products. So there are also these possible hazards of GM crops which we need to talk about and I'll be just showing this to you in another table as well. Now coming to the pros and cons of genetically modified plants and crops, uh, you know the, the benefits or the pros are more crops grown even under harsh conditions, greater shelf life, resistant to disease and pest. Modified nutritional value, you can increase the vitamin content of rice. You can increase the vitamin content of other crops. So the person will eat less but will get more of the vitamins which are necessary for good health. Then inexpensive, cheaper than fresh crops benefits the third world countries. Now the bad points are decrease in biodiversity, higher competition for small scale family run farms, development of antibiotic resistance in crops, introduction of allergies of food, creation of super weeds. Uh, table as well, just for a repeat. A nutritional value of foods could be improve, improved by introducing proteins, vitamins, or vaccines. Crops can be produced that uh, lack known allergens. Crops can grow in arid conditions where there is less uh, rain, conditions for better yield, because you can introduce the drought-resistant genes in it. Then GM crops can produce herbicides to kill pests. Then improve food supply agriculture in poor countries. GM crops can be engineered for improved yields. GM crops may have longer shelf life, so they don't uh, rot very easily. So they can last longer and then they can sell and the farmer can get more money. Reduces economic cost and carbon footprint. Less need for land clearing and pesticide usage. Now risks of GMOs are also quite a bit. New traits could cause adverse health reactions. Removal of traits could have unknown effects. Crops may limit biodiversity of local environment. Cross-pollination could lead to super weeds. Patent restrict farmers from accessing GM seeds. Foods with GM components may not be labeled. Different governments may have conflicting regulatory standards concerning safe usage. Now coming to the point in which you have been asked in your syllabus to talk about increasing the nutritional value of crops. We have this example of golden rice. Now, as you can see, genetically engineered rice, which contains a gene from carrots or other vegetables, which causes the rice to contain the building blocks for vitamin A production in the body. Now, why are we so concerned about vitamin A? Because vitamin A deficiency causes blindness and death. 125 million children suffer from vitamin A deficiency, and most of these children live in developing countries where rice is a staple food. Too much vitamin A causes other health problems. That's, a, that's another issue. But here, you know, 
we have developed this golden rice but still uh, you know countries where uh, gm crops are not allowed they will not grow these but this would increase of course the if people ate rice and they got more vitamin a so then about these we can save the lives of these 125 million children who suffer from vitamin a deficiency now the other side some people are in favor of GM foods because of what they can produce and believe that there is too little evidence to prove that GM food is toxic. They also like GM food because there is a product called golden rice which was able to give vitamin A deficient children the nutrients they needed. Because people have been eating GM food for the last 15 years, they believe that there are no ill side effects. So of course there are people who are in favor of it, there are people who are against it. But then of course we need to really discuss it in the long run. Uh, if after 20 years we say, oh my God, this used to cause uh, more kidney stones or more gallbladder stones or it used to cause more allergies or it used to cause more skin rashes, then it would be bad because you see human beings are being used as uh, trial guinea pigs because human beings will eat these and then after 20, 30 years you say, oh my God, this rice was not a good idea. So a lot of study needs to be done before this is introduced and before this is available for people to be eating these. Some countries have allowed it, some countries still do not allow it. Uh, this completes chapter 18 which was biotechnology and genetic modification and inshallah we will continue with the other chapters in the videos to come. This is the second video on this chapter.